I'm Marianne Sasaki. You're watching Life in the Law. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled today to have our guest today. It's another really difficult get. I've been begging him to come on the show for oh, since I started, and finally he acquiesced. So I really <laughs> appreciate it. I have Manmi Rana from Clay Chapman. Did I say that correctly? You said it right. Okay, yes. and we I go by Manu. If we yeah, here. we refer to him as Manu at the office. We work together, and um, we're here to talk about the life and times of a young lawyer in Hawaii. So once I'm you, not young, actually. You're young. The young lawyer division is 36 or cut. I know, but that's just... I'm talking about a law. Okay, here. okay, all right. <laughs> well, the, the middle, the middle tier, the, the middle, the mid-level associate experience we're going to talk about today. So, but, but tell me about why did you go to law school? I know you went to um, the University of Hawaii and you graduated um, cum laude, which is very impressive. Yeah. So, did you always want to be a lawyer or, or? Well, yeah, I decided after college, actually. Oh, yeah? I was looking to be a teacher. A teacher? Yeah. Oh, but my then, God. But then I saw I got student loans. Right. And no, um, and, you know, I'll, talk, I'll make the big bucks. I know, yeah, well, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. no, what it started off was I did AmeriCorps uh, while I was at Seattle University. Really? And I used to tutor, uh, like, homeless kids oh. or transitional children. And I just didn't like what was going on within the educational system. Oh, it's horrible, yeah. right? It's falling apart. It's and then also, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. also found out about their families. And uh, one of the issues that kind of got highlighted during my last year of mm -hmm. Seattle University was uh, a lot of single parents, but also particularly single mothers, and especially if they're going through abuse and a lot of transitional uh, that's families. a lot. That's a yeah. lot to take on. I mean, you really so, have to have a, yeah. a super calling right. for that, right? So. It's something I want to be interested in, and so I want to be able to represent them. And I know one particular lady; she went through a, a divorce, and it was not a great result for her or oh, for really? her child. Yeah. Uh huh. And so that kind of started. I wanted to do pu my interest in public interest, but also particularly working with Families. domestic violence. Yeah. Domestic yes, and, and and you did that, didn't you? Or yeah, I did. I worked at uh, my first. Internship, actually, my first internship in Hawaii, and then my first job, uh, I mean, attorney job, was with the Domestic Violence Clearinghouse, wow. which is now the Domestic Violence Action Center. I can't. I mean, that is such hard work. I mean, I've done just a very little bit of family law, and it's yeah. it's really, really it takes a special person. Well, it was good. I mean, in the sense of the work, it was. I mean, challenging. It was not. It's nonprofit, so it wasn't exactly the big bucks or anything right. like that. But coming out of the law school, um, the good thing about the Domestic Violence Action Center, and this with family law in general, is that you're kind of thrown in court right. uh, as soon as you start. They, they do. They send yeah. you. They don't yeah. care. And it, it, me, it started with TROs. And it was working with the victims and um, representing them in you know, family court. Uh, you know, TROs, it wasn't like... It's not something that you'll see on like TV or anything or something that's well, kind of yeah. But there were there are so many. But it one it professionalized it through you in court. So you were had to face a judge. You have to face opposing counsel. You have to deal with your client. And yes, you help her not only you usually her sometimes. Right. Uh, you got to help them in court, but also what happens outside of court. Right. You're sort of like a counselor, like yeah. shoulder to lean on right. and like, a, I mean, like a personal, a counsel, right. legal counsel, but also like they, I think you solve a lot of problems that aren't legal problems too. Right. I mean, helping people. Yeah. Right? But I think that's part of being an attorney. Is, is helping people? Yeah. Be, I mean, especially for your client. I mean, you may have different goals. You that's know? the right attitude. You, you got to be a counselor to them. And, you know, I mean. And really, I had, a, I, had a, I had a situation which I needed an attorney, and he was a counselor. And so that kind of helped me out. Right. I mean, so I think that's not something you can learn in law school. That's something That's, that's something you, you're sort of born with or you learn in yeah. life, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, uh, I wish I was more of a counselor. I think you're more sympathetic than I am. Well, what are you very sympathetic? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I like to do deals. I like, you know, transactions and, you know. <laughs> But so you still got to take care of your clients. You I know? do, and, and I would do anything them, for my right? clients. I right. love my clients. Yeah. I would do anything for and them. And you got to counsel them, although they oh, may yeah. have different obstacles. Right, it's no. still a counselor. They're all, I'm there for them yeah. twenty four seven. They know that, and yeah. they they and they take advantage of that right. too. A lot of them. So I'm, I'm there for twelve hours a day, maybe, maybe eight if it's on a Friday. 
<laughs> no, no, after, no, I'm just kidding. No. That's, <laughs> I, want to t I want to talk to the young lawyers and tell you that you, you're always a lawyer no matter where you go, no matter what you do. You, you, right? Yeah. You're no, always you are. a lawyer. You are. You, you, you are. Yeah, every situation people look for, to you for, for whatever. From they, the grocery store to... Really? And, you know, that, you that's how home. the clients come, too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I heard a story, I don't know if this is a true story, that you came in for a job interview at Clay Chapman and you were hired on the spot. No, that's not true. Yeah. I, it took me three interviews, actually. Really? But, but they kept on saying, we're going to find something for you. Because so they liked I you so much. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, what's not to like? Yes, yes. <laughs> but no, I, I heard that Jerry Clay was basically said, shook your hand and said, well, you know, welcome or something like that. And, and yeah, everybody no, else he, was kind Mr. of... Mr. Clay was great. Um, I, when I found out about the job my first day, I went to his office and thanked, thanked him. him. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah, I mean, it's a great firm. Yeah. Clay Chapman's a great firm to work for. It's... Um, the people are very, very smart. They're very, very industrious, but right. they don't have any um, uh, uh, elevated attitude, which is no, a don't. big problem usually you with lawyers. You brought up the topic of being a young associate. This is my first, I mean, I started a year ago, my first time really working in a firm. Really? Yeah, because it was a nonprofit, then I worked for a private attorney. Not to say it was one was better than the other. This it's, is better. This is different. Yeah, I no, work for yeah. a private attorney, I work for a firm, I'll tell you, a firm is better. <laughs> Listen to me, young lawyers, a firm is better, unless you have find a very, very special sole practitioner. Right. You have to find a very, very special person, otherwise you tear your hair out. I mean, well, it's really hard. For young attorneys, the, the, what I, oh, for me, what my experience is, uh, there's accountability. Not, not in the sense that I was in the Wild West, you know, right. prior to Clay Chapman. Right. But you have somebody checking on you and saying, okay, this is what I need to be done. I mean, not like they don't want to hear your opinion, but right. it helps a young associate. Right. Or a new training. associate. Like or a new associate. Training. Like it's a training. Yeah. Or well, there's, 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 there's processes in place of how to do things, and there are people came right. before you, right. and you don't have to recreate the wheel every time you right. do something, which I don't know if it was your experience, but it was my experience when, when, I, when I was um, practicing with a sole practitioner, I was on my own, really, pretty much left to my own devices. So it and by was the way, that scary. story you heard about me being hired on the spot, yeah. I made that up. Did you really? I had to spread that's the a, that's yeah. yeah. Well, Mondo's like the up and coming. <laughs> that's lawyer marketing of the firm. right there for you. Up, yeah, he's, you want okay. So you want to go to Mondo for what kind? What do you practice? And what, oh, right do, now, what do people want to come to you for? Uh, right now, we're doing bankruptcy mm -hmm. and we're doing evictions, mm -hmm. and then I do some collections. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of been transferred to uh, Jonathan Gilbert also. Oh, works. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but when you say bankruptcy, like what kind? Not well, right personal now, bankruptcy. No, no. Right, right? now, well, I mean, we represent the creditor. And usually it's in the context of we have a chapter 13, the debtor wants, and it's in connection with a foreclosure usually in the state court. Mm -hmm. So the debtor usually wants a payment plan, wants to be able to stay at their home. Right. So we obviously represent the interest of the secured creditor. So any banks that are listening out there, they, yes. should, they should take note yes. of your credentials yeah. and <laughs> the personal <laughs> service you, that you will receive <laughs> at Clay Chapman. Right. Um, so... Do, so do you find the work challenging? I mean, it is. It in, is. I, I mean, because you didn't have any experience in this area before, right? So very, you're learning, right? Very little um, prior to joining Clay Chapman. I had experience in foreclosures. Uh, it is a different. It's different in the sense that it's not necessarily you're trying to conduct a sale, or get a sale, you know, confirmed, or working with the borrowers to uh, see if a loan modification happens. It's you know, it, it's it's pretty standard documents, but is you know one minute you could be doing a chapter seven or 13 and uh, it just comes down to you know protecting the interests of the client and his business Good. No, I mean, obviously, so post-2009, business in foreclosures and right. bankruptcies was tremendous, I'm right. sure. Right. But yesterday came out in the paper that Americans' income dro um, jumped uh, most significantly since the early 1960s. Right. Um, so is the area still very busy? I mean, it It's still busy. Um, there has been a steady, I guess, uh, or a stop of an incline of bankruptcy being filed in Hawaii. Well, nothing could be like yeah. the two, the, no, after no, no. 2009, 2008, 2010. I mean, yeah. That opened up a whole... That was a thing. really scary and time. Yeah, it was. It and, really was. And, you know, if you... I represented, you know, banks and, you know, the lenders, and it was quite a balancing act. It wasn't just straightforward now. This is what foreclosure is. You know, foreclosure defense right. came around at that time. So, right. 
one thing I learned like from Mr. Romora, you know, from uh, that it is kind of, it's not so straightforward as it used to be. It is. No, it's. Now it's more litigated now and there's things. Well, know, people know of their right. Yeah. They know yeah. their rights and they know how to work right. the system a little better, yeah. I think. And um, state court judges and bankruptcy, the bankruptcy judge, Judge Farris, is taking notice of that. So it's not so much where you got a contract and there's a breach and there's, you know, notice right. and you can go straight right. forward. You know no. I mean? We can talk forever what happened in 2008. But like, but like, but like, so tell me, how does it get complicated? Like, um, uh, what, is it things that the bank does, things that the person it, in it, the it house does? It could be what, what the bank does, you know. Because uh, the chain of title is a chain of huge title, thing, the right? The mortgages, you know, there was an um, issue of was some documents notarized properly. And, you know, uh, what does a transfer to another, from one lender to another finance institution, what, does, what is, you know, required? Right. Do you need a acquiescence from the, the borrower? I mean, does the borrower have to agree if you sell on a loan like that? Or, I mean... Well, I mean, if it's going to one lender to another, no. And that happens all the time. Student loans get, one minute you're paying Sally Mae, the next minute... So it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really but matter. The, but there can be a rupture in that It can, in that and chain it's something that you, as the attorney for the lender... You need to be, uh, you know, well versed in and aware of. You know. Well, I'm going to take a quick break, and you can tell us how we should be well versed and aware of uh, what the bank does with our money. <laughs> You're watching Life in the Law. I'm Marion Sasaki with Manu Rano. We'll be right back. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on ThinkTechHawaii.com. Aloha. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. <music> Hi, welcome back. I'm Marian Sasaki. As I said earlier, I'm with Manu Rana. He's an associate, my colleague at the law firm of Clay Chapman. And we were just talking about bankruptcy law and the difficulty sometimes uh, tracing the uh, a loan as it goes from bank to bank mm -hmm. to bank. And what do they do? They they don't assign it right, or they it, there's no, a I drop mean, in the thing. No, uh, generally, you know, they. Uh, you know, Hawaii has a recording system. So, I mean... For, a dual recording yeah, dual system. dual recording system. And so, generally, that's how, especially if a mortgage gets transferred, that's how it's something you can keep track of. And, you know, for the most part, the assignment mortgages are not an issue. I mean, if there's a break of chain or something like that, then that's obviously something we bring up with the client. Mm -hmm. And so, it just comes to, you know, just making sure to, you know, the I's are dotted and the right. T's are crossed. In the sense that making sure that, you know, recording... Is done properly. It has to be perfect yeah. or else they'll reject it. Right. Land, mean, land court, you know, it's very uh, particular and right. you get, you know, if it's recorded in land court and then, you know. It's you, solid, so right? It's a sigh of relief right. for a lot of the right. lenders and right. stuff. And usually that's taken care of prior to the, you know, case being filed, but not all the time, you know, and that's why you got things like foreclosure defense or, you know. See, this is why people, nobody on earth would do the job a lawyer does, like with dotting the uh, I's and crossing the T's and reading the documents we read. It's the most, you know, I remember when I first started practicing, I was like, I can't do this work. We should give this to a lawyer. I'm not, you know, <laughs> but it, it's just hours and hours of making sure everything right. is perfect and fixing right. fixing other people's mistakes, which is even harder than making sure things are perfect in the That's first place. That's why you need a good support staff. So I'm going to jump around because I, 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 around I want, want to jump around. <laughs> I like to jump around. So, um, well, so how long have you been practicing? About seven years. Oh, so that's, that's not very long at all, no, really. No, no. No, no. And so what do you do? Do you, have, uh, do you do pro bono or do you... I do do pro bono. I do do some family law. Really? Um, um, and I 
still do some, yeah, mainly family law office pro bono. Uh, some divorces and unfortunately guardianships. Oh. And uh, like recently I just finished a guardianship. Now really? Pro, yeah. Of yeah. a, a guardianship of, of a child? A child, or? Okay. Yeah, child. Okay, yes. okay. And so I mean, because I, I, I told you I worked at DVAC, mm -hmm. um, domestic violence. So I always wanted to kind of stay within family law of some sort. Right. But, you know, right. obviously my obligation to the firm comes first. <laughs> right, right, right. But but it is a fascinating practice. And, yeah. you know, we do trusts in the states. I do trusts in the states. And that's a type of family law as well. In I think, oh, sorry, from my experience, that's the second. It's family law or trust estate. That's the question you're going to get the grocery store. They're, they're, yeah. they're interconnected, yeah. and, and it, it goes from birth to death, you right. know, and everything you need in between. That's right. what you really, yeah. you know, you really need a yeah. lawyer for, you right. know. Um, I just, that's where I was earlier today. I was, uh, we, we did a will and a trust for some people. And it, that's, I really feel like that's helping people. Like, yeah, definitely family law also, you right. get the sense of helping people. You know, signing a big, uh, you know, documents in a big contract, y you don't get that warm and fuzzy so much. Right, right. right. And you have that interpersonal right. connection with the right. client. Yeah. So where do you see yourself in five years? Do you have a, do you have a plan? Do you have a, uh, what would you like to do? Um... I'll see. I'm going to, you know, try to excel. Work and, hard and at the firm. Chairman, yeah. Well, I'm going to hang on your coattails. Yeah, no, we'll work hard. Up. We're going to work hard together. My, I want an office with that kind of view. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you should. Uh, that's what I, I want, too, actually. I have a little tiny sliver of a view. That's, see how pathetic we are as lawyers? We don't want much. Just give us a little money and a view, and we'll, we'll work 12 hours a day. So, yeah. Well, I think this is a, uh, Clay Chapman is a great firm. Uh, it it's wide open. Mm -hmm. I think it's growing. I think the practice is, be, is being elevated, so I think it's a great place to be right now, you know? Right. Uh, the thing I was impressed with, and I think Mr. Yamura said this, they want to be a generational firm. Right. I mean, yeah, they want to stay. Yeah. Do you really call Steve Yamura Mr. Yamura? No, no, no. You're just doing no. it on TV, right? I'm doing right? it on TV, right. It's Steve Yamura. We, yeah. Well, certain partners I call by Mr. Mr. Yeah. Earnhardt. Mr. Clay. Mr. Jerry, you call Mr. Clay? Yeah. I, yeah. Call, I call Jerry, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. How are you doing? Well, because I think you deal with it more. A lot. Yeah. I deal with a lot. And poor Jerry, the, the name partner in our firm, is <laughs> laid up for weeks and yeah. weeks. And so I hope he's watching today and see that we're, I hope we're doing the firm proud, Jerry. So, um... Where do you see yourself five years? <laughs> well, I would like to be, I would like to be a partner, you know? I like to be. I like to be Bob Chapman. If I could be any partner, <laughs> that's who I would be. <laughs> Aim high. <laughs> like you know, that's one thing I learned about going to Harvard, right? Like I wasn't even going to apply, right, to right. Harvard Law School, and I didn't want to spend the money. And it was fifty dollars. I didn't want to spend the money. And my <laughs> husband was like, "You're, in, this is nonsense. You just send it in. You never know." And because I was so certain I wouldn't get in, and lo and behold. You know, that f the following fall, I was, I was going up to Cambridge, and I was in, uh, going to Harvard Law School. So, like, I, I think if, if I'm going to dream, I'll, I'll, I'll dream big, That's you know. Impressive. So Yeah. It's a lot of big names to drop, Cambridge, Harvard. Yeah, well, you know, That's, but, that's but, uh, you know, it's only, it, it really is not such a big deal. If you put one foot in front of the other, you end up at Harvard. That's all you have to do is please everybody <laughs> every step of the way. <laughs> If you, if, you, if you can suck up that much, you, right. can, you too can go to Harvard Law School. So, <laughs> now you spend time in New York as well, right? Actually, I, I took the bar in New York. Did I, you think about going there? I did, I did. Um, I was in, I guess, transition. I took some time off from work. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking of doing international law. And, uh -huh. and really the only way, I mean, from Hawaii, the, uh, unless you started from the beginning and, you know, you worked with businessmen or, you know, various institutions. Right. Is, I was thinking of getting my LLM, um, right. but I think... I thought of getting my LLM. Yeah, okay. I applied to get my LLM. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Then I didn't take it. I wish I had, actually. Yeah. What well, stopped you from... Uh, well, it was my last year of law school, and it would have meant one more year of law school, and I just yeah. couldn't, okay. I just couldn't f deal. It was in taxation, which right. I happen to love. But um, I, uh, they accepted me, but I was like, oh, do I really want to go to right. another year? Okay. And plus, there was this huge salary beckoning me from, you know, so, <laughs> there you, go. you know, yeah, so it's hard to say no to, you know, like one of, like a top firm. Right. So I, 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 I didn't do the, I took the uh, money uh, grabbing, uh, <laughs> well, not the academics who road. Now? <laughs> yeah. So, so did you spend any, well, like what, why? Actually, I, 
New York only visited like three times and I was there for like maybe a week or so. So right. it was really because I was looking to Fordham and to go into that area. And plus international law, I think. Does Fordham have an international yeah, law they program? Do. Oh, they, they do. do. They do. Oh, the, okay. All own program. So I was looking into that. But um, I wanted to get into practice and then I just started doing my own family law cases right. for a little while. Right. So, yeah. It's fun to have your own practice. It is. It's challenging. It's challenging. But it's fun. You have to I work mean, all the time. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's, and it's hard to, when you're just starting out. It's really hard. No, it is. It is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But you have to just keep hanging in there. I mean, I think that's the, the answer, right? I right. mean, you know, to, to being a successful lawyer. Is you just, it's called a practice for well, a reason. Well, it's a business. And any business, you gotta be, you got to hang in there. Right. Yeah, so, keep going, yeah. keep going, yeah. keep going. Yeah. So, and now you're married. Yes. You have a lovely wife, Thank Nidika. You. Thank you. And she's studying to be an accountant, maybe. Right. Yes, yeah. she is. So that'll, you'll, be, that'll be, you'll be a power uh, couple. The most boring couple. No, <laughs> that's a perfect couple. I'm bankruptcy I think. attorney and an accountant. Oh, that's great. I, I, need, I, think I, I see you in Kaka'ako. <laughs> I see you in a penthouse in Kaka'ako. So, well, you asked also what I want in five years. I do want to get back into more family law. Do you? Yeah, working with DV victims. I'll yeah. support you at the yeah. firm with that. I, because I, I really, I think I it's fascinating family law, and I think there's like it's a it's a good revenue stream. Frankly, I really do. Right, but it's probably for me it was the, although I do feel like I'm a lawyer, bankruptcy lawyer, just felt the most fulfilled at that time personally. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Well, we should we should uh, we should come up with a plan and, right. and put it before the. Well, I, yeah. We Other than that, doing pro bono, I mean. I could do more. You can always do more, but right. uh, that's something, one avenue I'm going to continue. Are you active in the bar? Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm, oh yeah, right now, I'm in collections and bankruptcy, and I, I, I go once in a while to the family law. You uh, do? Yeah, yeah. I was, they're the mo out of all the associations, one of the best organized. In the the state. family law? Yeah, they're very organized. Section? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, probably in the country, too. Really? Yeah, they really take their, like, bar meetings, conventions seriously. You should come to the Hawaii Women Law Association meetings. The men come oh, all the okay. time, and yeah. it's like a great, because they understand the complexity of balancing work life, ex right. you know, experience, and right. a lot of them are single mothers, and the, a lot of the work they do is to, you know, encourage uh young women lawyers or women who maybe are single mothers want to become lawyers. It's really mm -hmm. kind of a fascinating group. It's right. really, you should, yeah, that, I think the, you, you could find a lot of connections there. You could right. meet a lot of people there, I think. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, that'd be great. I mean, I'll take you next I time. Was, I mean, I was raised by a single mother, you know, from up, up in when I was eight years old to now. So, really? Your mother's yeah. a single mother? Yeah, I didn't yeah. realize. Oh, my, my, cause, yeah, my dad passed away, unfortunately, from cancer. Oh. And, and no, but she just took on everything that was in front of her. Really? Yeah, she, I mean, not to go too much. No, let's, no, let's she, hear. I'm, she, I'm, I mean, curious. I'm week, so curious. A week after my dad died, she went back to work. A week. That's amazing. A week. I mean. She's tough. Yeah. Five times ever. I, I don't know. I, I'm not tough as her. Well, she, you know, I have to say, and I hope this doesn't, but um, Indian mothers, Made of steel, man. I they really so, yeah. are. I, it's I, like I, I don't. I hate to sit, you know, categorize mothers, in general, mothers in, general, in general. It's true, yeah. but but you know, the intellectuality and this right. the the determinedness and the persistence. It's a cultural. Right. I think it's a right. cultural phenomenon. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I I can sort of imagine how how <laughs> determined she was when you were when you were young. And was she? Um, did she have high expectations for you? I don't know. I mean, she always wanted me to do well. Nice. I think got to do well in studies, but right. she wanted me to have like, like outside life. Right. She made sure I went to dances. Right. Um, right. Usually I went stag. But so <laughs> what? What do you, What do you like to do in your spare time now? Do um, you swim? Go to the beach, swim. That's what I try to do after work. I go to Magic Island, swim, and not to eat so much. But I'm not doing. No, I'm we, not doing so well. I, now, no, you know I. <laughs> I do like to eat, eat and swim. I love to and, eat yeah. too. I, oh, and I have to say that. Um, Manu, Manu's wife, but Manu and his wife uh, supplied some of the most delicious Indian food I've had in Hawaii. I think, I mean, I think we need to have a, a, a better Indian choices. I, I, it's, it's like killing me. I used to eat Indian twice a week in New York, and here, I, you know, I go well, like once a month or whatever, and I go and I moan and complain. Or she needs to give cooking lessons would be probably oh, the yeah, best thing. She could do that. Spread her. Uh, spread her knowledge around. Now, she's from India, Nitika, yeah? Yeah, she is. Yeah, and so how does she like Hawaii? How is she adjusting? Uh, she's doing all right. Yeah? You know, yeah, she's liking it. Yeah? So it, was a little, it was hard at first, but 
she's getting used to it. Yeah, you have to make friends. And yeah. I mean, it's hard for me from coming from New York. Yeah. You know, you don't have anyone to talk to, right. and everything seems very different. Right. And, and how's her learning how to drive? Oh, it's going okay. Yeah? I still <laughs> don't know how to drive. <laughs> Everybody should know that, that I'm terrified of driving. <laughs> if you have any driving tips, join the conversation. <laughs> Call 415-871-2474. I'm terrified. Tell me how I can learn how to drive. Can you hypnotize me, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> But definitely call in if you have anything to say, 415-871-2474. So do you have any tips for me driving? Why am I terrified, man? I'm not terrified of anything. Because it's a giant machine that you can giantly harm vast. You've got to take control of the giant. I'm not, um, <laughs> that, I, it's the one thing that has eluded me. I, re I really, I, very, very little I, has eluded me. Three times, two times. Oh, my God. I was best 16. Oh, yeah. that, that, uh, that, I find that to be a very uplifting story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's very good. On the, on that uplifting note. My mom note, passed the first time. Did she? Of course she did. My dad did it. So, so there you go. There you go. <laughs> what, uh, the indomitable, what's your mother's name? Oma. Um, the indomitable Oma Ram, Ram, Rana. Rana, thank you so much for producing Mano. Right. Mano, thank you so much for thank coming you. on today. I really appreciate it. I hope you all enjoy the show. You can see us, obviously, every week here at, on Think Tech Hawaii at, from 1 to 2, one, not to 1 to 2, 1 to 1.30 on Wednesdays, Life in the Law. I'll see you soon.